A very warm welcome to our morning service. On this first Sunday after Ascension, we remember Christ's ascension to heaven, which reminds us above all that heaven and earth coexist and that Christ has gone before us to prepare a place in heaven for us all. At the same time, we look forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, as promised by our Lord. We meet together to remember Christ's ascension into heaven in the light of the risen Christ and in receipt of the Holy Spirit.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, and, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, unto whom, whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, that thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, the King of glory, who has exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us, and exalt us unto the same place whither our Saviour Christ is gone before, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, beginning at the ninth verse. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, where is the God, the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Here endeth the lesson.
Holy Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning at the 26th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to keep you from stumbling. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, an hour is coming when those who kill you will think that by doing so, they are offering worship to God. And they will do this because they have not known the Father or me. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you rem may remember that I told you about them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be, be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. And we say together, I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the only begotten Son of God, God begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I have decided to do something slightly different this morning, uh, and rather than preach another sermon to you, uh, we are going to reflect on an icon and deliver the sermon in that way instead. Those of you who are listening online, which is all of you, uh, will note that the screensaver is the icon which people in church will have on the front of their service sheet. Uh, icons, or one of the purposes of icons, are to teach people about the faith. Uh, and I have found a reflection this morning on an icon of the Ascension. Uh, the reflection was written by Rowan Williams, the Archbishop of Canterbury. So I'm going to try and navigate you uh, through the various scenes in the icon to give a greater insight into the Ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is entitled At the Still Centre and you need to look at your icon uh, as I read this reflection. From as early as the 6th century, the standard way of representing the Lord's ascension in the Christian East has been to show in the foreground the living and present body of Christ, Christ's apostles, whilst the enthroned figure of Christ in glory is depicted on a smaller scale as if receding into heaven. Front and centre is Our Lady, her hands raised in the timeless gesture of prayer. St a still, monumental figure among the apostles who are shown waving their arms and looking thoroughly disorientated. Now we have no evidence in the Bible that Mary was present at the Ascension. 
but that is not the point. Her stillness and empty handedness represent what is at the heart of the church. Her open hands do not actually touch the circle of light in which the ascended Jesus sits, but they echo and embrace its lines, as if the church's prayer is shaped by the reality of Jesus glorified, but never grabs it or encompasses it or possesses it. All the excitement flows around Mary and yet it seems not to touch her. The apostles, as you can see, are bewildered, animated. You can almost hear their heated questioning. Has Jesus really left them for good? What did he mean by saying he was going to his father? What did the angels mean when they said he would come again as they had seen him go? Mary, in contrast, simply extends her hands as if in readiness to carry the globe of light that is her son in splendor. Just as in Nazareth, she prepares herself to hold the gift that is Jesus. She opens herself to the spirit who brings Jesus to birth. So this is not a parting, even if the apostles are inclined to think it is. The same spirit who brought Jesus to life in Mary's body is doing what the spirit always does, opening a space for us for the glory of the word of God to come alive. And this is happening even when the apostles are shaken and confused. Somewhere in the middle of the church and in the middle of, middle of our own lives of faith, there is a pool of still water ready to receive the image, the light of Christ afresh. When we think about the church, we can think about its divisions and controversies. We can find any amount of drama, mess and soap opera. But the traditional icon of the Ascension shows us simply what always lives in the centre. The stillness out of which Christ comes to life in the spirit. If we pray for the renewal of our faith, it must be a prayer for reconnection with that austere but gentle figure of the Mother of God, opening her hands in peace and hopefulness. We are privileged at times to see in the life of the church someone who embodies this. It may be a contemplative monk or a nun. It may be an unknown layperson or a child at prayer or a whole community of worshippers caught up together in quiet, loving attention as they hear the words or music that open heaven to them. But when this happens, what we see is the real mystery of the ascension. Christ is no longer present to us as another individual, even as a supremely lovable and holy one. He is the life that floods the entire universe. And for us to live, to grow up into our full humanity, we need to be flooded by his life so that it is born in us as it was in Mary. And we need not to be hypnotised by the soap operas of the church as an institution. The living body of Christ on earth is anchored at a far deeper level in that prayer of stillness. The clear and calm water in which the likeness of Christ appears. Amen.
and let us pray. Let us pray for the whole state of Christchurch militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole council and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other kind of adversity. We remember particularly this morning the people of the Middle East, especially those in Israel and Palestine. We remember those caught up in the conflict and we pray for them. We pray for all those innocent victims of war who are killed or injured and for all those who mourn. And we pray for those who govern and ask that they may do so wisely and peace, peacefully. And we remember particularly this morning all those dual nationals held in Iran, remembering particularly Nazarene Zakari Radcliffe, as once again she awaits her fate. And we also remember those suffering from COVID, particularly those in India. We remember those who care for them, the doctors, nurses and care workers. We remember all those who suffer and those who mourn. And we remember our own parish this morning, those who are unwell, those awaiting surgery and those who suffer in silence and are known only to Almighty God. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Remembering particularly this morning those whose anniversary falls this week, Patricia Dickinson, Jacqueline Dunn, Gloria Keary, and Hilda Chapman. Lord, we beseech thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen.
as our Saviour Christ has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the ascended Christ and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.